Albania's RTSH has revealed the 30 songs that will compete to win Festivali i Kungis, the national selection for Eurovision 2016 in Albania. You guys, we've got to go through our poll in just a few days. It's already received 1,100 votes. In first place is Besa with the song Free Your Heart, followed by Revolt Clan with We Can't Find Love. Then it's Flaka Kralani with You're Not For Me, followed by Inshina Sufi with Infinite, Ineta Tarifa with Fairy Tale, and Clodian Kachani and Razarda Smaja with Love Is Eternity. Now you guys, my personal favorites include Besa, the song Free Your Heart, it's very radio friendly, like you could hear this being played when you're driving down the street. It's like modern, unlike many songs we've had out of Albania in recent years. Uh, my only problem is that there's no climax. Like, I want the Alheda Dani, Mariah Carey, whoa, whoa, whoa moment. And this song is very nice and very pleasant, but it's like this. And I'm not sure that's enough for Eurovision. It's very cinematic, I think. Hmm. And it's kind of something that, when I was listening to it, I kind of imagined, like, I don't know, mountains and sunsets, and it's got that kind of feel, and it's got the potential that it can be reworked to make it a bit more, I don't know, dramatic. It kind of gives me a bit of Michelle Arapa vibes. There's a bit of chanting in there as well. I, it's not like a full-on dibby dibby done by it, but there is definitely chanting. I can see why this is winning the vote, um, because you s it doesn't stand out and hit you, but compared with the rest of the song, it is a highlight. Yeah, I definitely feel that African vibe in this song, but for me, it's a little bit bland. Like, I really like it, it's dreamy, it's like you're running to some in some forest and then you see a lake, you're running to this lake, but you never reach it, because there is no climax at all. You have lived, I can tell you have <laughs> lived. Take me to that forest, Misha. <laughs> Next, uh, Revolt Clan. You know, a lot of our readers are really feeling the song. They're saying it really stands out. But I don't, again, I don't like spoken word. I don't like rap, particularly if it's in another language because I can't access it at all because there's no melody. I, I think this is a very modern song. I just don't like the genre. And for me, it's not the right choice for Albania. I, I just, I can't see this doing well at Eurovision. I was kind of taking a few notes because there's so many songs that you need to take notes as to what each song is about. And I only took down one word for this song and it was boring. And I can't, I just can't connect with it at all. And I was reading through the readers' comments and they were all saying, oh, this is so great. And I was kind of wondering, what, am I missing something? It's like every other rap song. Many people were suggesting me some uh, rap artists from different countries, okay, I decided to listen to some of the songs, and it was the same, like, every time it has the same tune, it just rapping with the simple melody, and it's like this, so I can see it winning. You could see this winning? In Albania, yes, because it's Albania and it's weird, but in Stockholm, never, N not even in the final. Someone who I think could make the final is Miss Flaka Kralani with the song You're Not For Me. This is very edgy. Like, I love when a woman goes guttural, like, whoa, 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 whoa. And she's doing that with like a pop, like an R&B-ish pop song. I mean, again, I don't think this is a finished product. I think they would need to rework this for Stockholm if it advanced. Because right now, again, it's too flatline. I need more of this. But she's got enough there. Like the video, I feel like her song is currently much longer than three minutes because the video stops at three minutes yeah. and it's almost like they've cut it in the middle of a note. So I think with the reworking, this could be very powerful, um, which gives me hope. It promises a lot, but delivers very little ultimately. There's a few seconds of it where you're like, wow, bam, that's the song that's got to win. But like you say, it runs out of steam and it definitely needs some work because there, the elements are there. It doesn't touch me at all. Uh, of course it stands out among uh, other ballads, but no, I, I just can't feel it. Now a song our readers are feeling is Infinite from the artist Enshina Sufi. I'm sorry, this is too disco for me. It, something about this song is too long for me. I see why people like it. Again, it's more modern than most of the songs we've heard in FIK in recent years. But I just, I'm getting very 70s vibe. It's my favorite. Is it? Um, mm, because it's kind of, it sounds trashy. Obviously, I don't know what she's singing. So she could be singing about world peace, but to my ears, it sounds trashy. 
And we haven't really had an Albanian kind of trashy song since 2009. Which was and amazing. He, mm, so, and they got to the final that year. And she has strong enough vocals that she'll satisfy the old fogies who sit on the FIK jur- jury panel. So I, I would be really happy if that song got true. It is also one of my favorites here. And I like it, it's a banger. Uh, like the sound, and also I really, really like the violin before the chorus. It builds up very nicely. It's something it gives something unique to the song. You clearly have a high tolerance for pain. Now, what other songs are standing out to you guys? Does it include Fairy Tale from Aninda or Love and Eternity from Clodian? No. No, and no. <laughs> One of the ones that struck me was. Tuta Kurti. The song is In My Eyes. And like Flacca, it starts off really powerful. She has really strong vocals, but it loses steam and it just flat lines. Actually, my second favorite is uh, Fairy Tale by Anada Tarifa. Uh, it is mystical, it has some energy in it. It feels special a little bit, but it needs some revamp just to make it even more powerful. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I, in my notes I wrote same as, same as, because it sounds very familiar like other stuff, but that's just because it needs to be fine-tuned and chopped. Once they chop it, they can have something great. She's very sultry, there's like a, a, a sexuality coming out of this song, and it, but not in a trashy way. It's like, I don't know, it's very sensual, that's the word, um, and I could see her doing really well. But you guys, of course, we have to remember that Albania always chops it up. Juliana Pasha, what was that, 2010? She came to Oslo with basically a new song. It was amazing. I hated it at Festival de Hongas. El Heda Dani. It was literally a new song. I think we don't have to worry. I think Albania is ready to kind of dust off the dust and step into the 21st century. Belarus will choose its Eurovision 2016 singer in January. Ten acts have made the final, and we are running a poll on Wooby Blogs asking you to name your favorites. In just a few days, you guys have cast more than 720 votes, and this is your top five as of December 12th at noon. In first place is Kirill Yurkamov, Yurmakov with Running to the Sun. Second is Napoli with My Universe. Third is Anastasia Malashkovich with Pray for Love. Next is Alexi, Alexi Gross with Flame. And then we have Navi with This Land. You guys, let's take these in order. First place, we have Kirill with Running to the Sun. What are you thinking? I'm thinking of Latvia 2011 Angels in Disguise. It has the same kind of beat, especially in the live version. Not so much on the studio track, but it's got kind of it's very manly and kind of poppy, upbeat, but I don't think it's got that much of an international appeal. It's kind of tacky. I actually really like it. It's in my playlist. I enjoy listening to it. It, it has an interesting melody. He does some vocal tricks uh, throughout the song, which seem really nice. And I think he can do really well in, the, uh, in Stockholm. I just, whenever I look at his video from the studio audition, he looks like a creamsicle, those like orange lollipops. Um, but it kind of fits with this, because this is very juvenile, slightly unfinished, like poorly produced. But he has lots of energy, and there's some charm in that. Like, it's such a hot mess that it's actually kind of charming. And in Belarus's national selection, you have to cling on to what you can. So I can see why this is in first. I mean, it's not my personal favorite, and I don't think it would make the final at Eurovision. In fact, I don't think it would, like, finish above last in its semifinal. But I appreciate his spirit. Second place with us, Napoli, my universe, Porig. Please tell us what's going on. I started listening to it, and I was like, hmm, that's very Disney. And then I was thinking in my head, I can't say that because it's so cliche to call a song Disney. And then the chorus comes along, and she starts going, my universe, and then bam, I expect her to start going, my gravity, my butterflies, because it's basically a rip-off of Zlata Ognovich from Ukraine 2013. And I didn't like that song then, and I certainly don't like a uh, cheap um, knockoff of it. So, yes, I'm completely confused. I'm guessing people just, it brings back good memories of past Eurovision. Maybe that's why they're going for her. 
I can't see her doing anything if she gets to start one. This song is boring for me. Yes, that's, this word will refer to many of the songs from Belarus. And I don't know, it has no climax. I, I'm not feeling the vibe of the chorus. It, it just goes and goes and goes away. Yeah, you know, it starts off so frozen, so Mulan, so Little Mermaid, but Napoli ain't a child, so it makes the song even more awkward. Um, I feel like this doesn't have legs to stand on musically. I feel like it's very empty. So if you blow, the whole thing just falls apart. I mean, she should have spent less time focused on her dress and more time focused on the song, really. Next up is a girl praying for love. It's Anastasia Maleshkovich. You guys, I'm really liking this. She's giving me shades of Adele and Destiny Chukuyerne. There's like a big voice in there. Um, and it's enough to kind of make a repetitive song bearable. It's fine. She's a fierce female doing her thing. She's dressed similar to Cerebro or back in 2007. Her song just goes on. Um, you were saying that she's vocals like Adele, but their vocals don't touch me in any way. I actually really like it. She has a unique timbre of the voice. It really, it is really, really powerful. It, she boosts the energy, she delivers the song really well. It, it has some dark in, darkness in it. I think it will appeal to the audience. And she also gives us a kind of crazy bag lady vibe. Like she's really angry, the rage seems real. And it's just, I feel like a lot of the songs in Belarus, the emotions are very fake. It's very, yeah. I want to be a singer, so I'm going to act like I'm in pain. And I just, I'm like, oh, I'm over it. But with her, there's like, I don't know, an authenticity. She's believable. In fourth, it's Alexi Gross with the song Flame. You guys, this is my number one. I know it's cheesy. I know it's dated. This, you know, is adult, easy listening from the late 90s. But... I just can't stop playing it. It's giving me hope in these dark times. It is giving me the light to find my way home. I think this could strike a chord with adult jury members, um, with middle-aged housewives all over Europe. What about you, Porig? The same way that I didn't like Jessica's flame in Malta, I don't like Alexia's flame in Belarus. The snow is falling and putting it out. I'm left completely cold by it. Male ballads typically don't really do that well. Didrik from Norway, he flopped with his ballad. If this was a woman, it might make me um, appreciate it more because I think generally women carry off these big power ballads a bit better. But poor Alexi, maybe he might win over the voters in Belarus, but it's not exciting enough at Eurovision, especially given some of the names that have been announced already. It gives me no hope at all. It reminds me of the end of 90s. The Russian music scene was full of such songs and I don't want to go back there. So boring, cliche, no, just no. And rounding out our top five, it's Navi with the song Geta Zamla. You guys, their romance is about as believable as Nicki Minaj getting together with Nelson Mandela and he is dead. It's just, there's no chemistry. It's not believable. The song kind of smacks of desperation to me, especially when they start chirping, you know, hey, hey at the end. I just, no, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> this, <laughs> this is my favorite one. And I like it so much because it's so un Belarusian. Because as you were saying, Belarus, their songs often seem very industrial and forced and that they're forcing themselves to be happy and forcing themselves to have all these emotions and I don't know whether that's to do with the political climate or blah 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 but this just flows so nicely and it's so sweet and I think they could do kind of nearly an Anna Rossinelli style staging like what she had and you'd have big flowers and just the hoo-hoos and he needs a bit of work on his vocals but like she's perfect. I also really really like it I, yeah, and I understand the, really, the lyrics and uh, it feels for me like I'm running around some field of weed, uh, not weed, but... Uh, weed, maybe? No, just weed. <laughs> it's really pure, it's uh, so sunny, uh, I like the energy, yes, they like uh, chem some chemistry, but 
they can work on it and they can do something with it in Stockholm. It will be great, I think. Get the man a bucket of Viagra. He's gonna need to work on it a lot because it's just not there. So you guys, is there anything else, another song in this selection that you think has a chance to win that deserves to be toward the top? No, there's the only song that stands out for me, but it's not for a good reason, is Alexander Ivanov with his How to Fly. It's very kind of Nickelback sound, and it's the kind of thing that Minus One from Cyprus would probably do, except they'd do it better. And he needs a haircut. He looks like Yevgeny Plushenko, who appeared with Dima Balan on stage at Eurovision 2008. The only difference is Yevgeny has gold medals, and this dude is not going to get a gold medal in Belarus. Sergei Lazarev has confirmed that he will sing for Russia at Eurovision 2016. Of course, our readers may know him from this photo. Oh my god, and this photo. Ooh, he shaved everything in this one. You guys, but we're not here to talk about what he looks like. We're here to talk about his songs and his voice. Are you excited that Sergei is headed to Stockholm? I'm very excited. It's a great decision. I'm not familiar with his whole back catalog because he's been in a boy band since the early noughties and then he split up and went solo in 2006 or whatever. But I know his last two songs, Take It Off and Seven Wonders. And they're like just ultimate Euro pop smashes. The readers might want to take a look at the Take It Off video. Like, it's coming from Russia, but he's there in his skin tight pink pants. He doesn't have his shirt on for the whole video. His shoulder pads, he's surrounded by hot, sweaty, muscly men. Sergey has his wife at home, but we know who he's entertaining. Yes, actually, um, I think it itches in Russia for ending up second in Vienna. So I guess they said like, okay, we have to go for the best and this is what they got. And even though there's no song yet and there's nothing to compare with, I would say that Rush is gonna, is gonna end up, and this is a statement, top five. And yes, I, would, I was taking a look at uh, that Take It Off and Seven Wonders songs. I wasn't familiar with uh, with his music, but I really think that appeals to the Eurovision kind of pop style. So I think they're going to do very, very well. I mean, Russia 2017, let's head to Moscow, guys. And you know what? I will happily be there if Sergei wears some of the costumes he wears on his Instagram account, aka nothing. Um, you can see on his Instagram that he hangs out with Philip Kirkorov, Annie Lorak, so he's very much a part of that kind of Russian pop music intelligentsia glitterati. So he's gonna have this, uh, the song catering to the audience. Um, and also, we have to look at, like, back in the day, Sarah Bro 2007, that kind of trashy, frothy Russian pop. It did really well, but then when the juries came, suddenly Russia was always going for world peace, like mm -hmm. 2013, 2014, 2015, um, and so this is going to be a nice change of direction. Um, just listen, look at the lyrics, you know. I, I think this song is Take It Off. He says, I want to see you tonight and undress you with my eyes. Show me your secrets and I will take your clothes off one piece at a time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, and also, he, he likes to have fun. In the video for that song, sorry, That's All It Is, you know, he's playing the geek sheet card. It just works really well. Once Russia don't decide to go down the peace song route because Polina Gagarina last year, she had a great song, but before Eurovision, she wasn't known for her ballads. She was known for her frothy pop, a bit like Sergei. So I'd be slightly worried that they're going to lumber him with a ballad. I hope that they don't because he has the potential to gather votes from all over the place because he's kind of a bit like Mons. He's a big name all over the East because he was a judge on The Voice Ukraine. So they all know him out there. And he has that Western appeal, I think, as well. And also, didn't he compete on Dancing with the Stars? Um, you know, I think Mons won his country's version of Strictly Come Dancing, so we know he's got the moves. I just can't see him wasting his body or his moves with a song about peace. Like, unless it's an EDM number about peace, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, I don't think they're going to be so full to send another song about peace and love and let's tear all the walls apart and all that stuff. Okay, we got the message, we got what you're going for, but it's not working. So. Go straight to the audience that wants to see that 
really six pack nice guy and slay on stage just go for it and stop messing around and if you look at his take it off video he does exactly that he's working a tank top black leather pink pants giving us abs for days i just can't see him straying from that it would be a weird mix to sing about love in peace having that kind of suit hashtag nothing on it doesn't really mix for me people were saying on twitter how it was a clever move by Russia because the band won't boo a six pack at Eurovision. But then I was thinking like they booed Dima at the Eurovision concert anyway. That's because his abs have lost their form in recent years. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that Sergei lost to Dima back in 2000, what was it, 8? I can because he wasn't quite as hunky. But his song, I had quick listen to it earlier, was Flyer. It's a very, very cheesy. It kind of makes maybe anti-crisis girls seem like Yates. If you know the words Mediterranean Bank and Sharabank, then you probably watched the reveal of the 20 semi-finalist songs in Malta for its national selection for Eurovision 2016. We're going to quickly go around and discuss some of our favorites, and I've got to kick it off with Ms. Ira Lasco. Now, they only played 15 seconds of her songs, but I can tell you I am already feeling both of them. That's why I love you. This is her ballad. And now, it's obviously hard to judge just hearing, you know, the first 15 seconds of build up in a ballad, but you can tell she is putting Seventh Wonder behind her and stepping into 2016. This sounds modern, very powerful. I'm feeling it. See, I think a lot of these singers are very small fish in a very small pond, whereas Ira Lasco is like a blue whale not to look at but career wise she's like a blue whale and she needs to get out of malta and into europe so she's going back to your origin and she's not taking a half hour she's going all out i think and there was definitely even just from the 15 snip second snippet you could sense the quality and production behind her song and she wants to win it i'm not feeling it at all like, that's what, uh, that's why I love you. The first second of it reminded me of uh, Team Balance Apologize. It's like the same drums in the background, and that's why I can't listen to it because it just reminds me of it all the time. Okay, so I can understand that maybe this isn't your favorite compared to Chameleon Invincible. Her dance track, now this is the one. I'm gonna say it right now. This is the winner of Malta Eurovision Song Contest 2016. She is reinventing herself. She is following the dance trend. This song is modern. It's going to be kind of a Kerala-esque power ballad. Not in a cheesy schlager way, but in that empowering kind of, almost, I keep bringing up Sia, Sia way. Like, there's a darkness. She talks about flesh and bones in the lyrics, so I can tell this is going to cut to the soul. Um, it, this is just amazing. This is going to slay the pack. Mm, yeah, I went kind of decided to torture myself and I watched the two hour long show yesterday and I, but I was on Twitter and that snippet Twitter lit up and everybody was like this is the song it instantly has an instant connection even though we hear barely any lyrics just even the build up it's kind of as you said dark and edgy and I think that is the winner I think you're a little bit biased I don't know this 15 <laughs> seconds of course it was very intriguing I'm really interested to see what's going on next, but I can't say that it's like the best of the best in Malta. I'm gonna go out on a limb. This is the winner of Eurovision 2016. They are taking destiny. Her destiny was to win Junior Eurovision. It's Ira's destiny to win Eurovision. She's going to, so bam. The next song we have to talk about is from Christabel. Um, Kingdom. Now you guys, she of course was the runner-up last year in multi year Song Contest. She's just got energy and life and this song, like, again, it reminds me of Era's second song. It's alive, it's now, it's modern. Uh, and Christabel knows how to work it. Some people can't do dance numbers, but she can do dance numbers. It's believable and people in the audience, they showed a minute clip. People were getting down. Mm. It's given me kind of a feeling similar to Sinandad Gwedge's Golden Boy. Because it started off very slow and I was like, oh no, Christabel's doing a ballad, why Christabel? And then she started doing the, it started getting all upbeat and dancing and I think this could be even better than Rush. Yeah, I also really, really loved it. It's full of energy, uh, she has that positive vibe, she, she's working it on stage and audience feels that. She can be a runner-up or a winner. <laughs> 
We are all making predictions this afternoon. <laughs> now, another act is、um, another veteran, Jessica the Flame. And you guys, I think she's on fire. Like, her hair is a fairy red, the song has energy. Malta this year is really stepping into 2016. In the past, Their acts have been very dated and like I almost dread the national final, but I feel like they've turned it up a gear. Maybe because they've been doing so well at Junior Eurovision, they're like, look, it's time to turn it up, step it up, and get a win. And it could be her year. I mean, if Ira, I don't know, has laryngitis or something. Oh, Jessica, how you disappoint me. After Hypnotica and Fandango, I was expecting like some sublime dance number. And then she comes out with a bloody ballad. Because Jessica, every year, it's the vocals that let her down. So I don't see how she'd suddenly decide to do a ballad and that a ballad might、um, help her out and win. I can't see her beating Ira or Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that Jessica came up with a ballad because she couldn't do the、uh, energetic number. Like on stage, she, she couldn't dance. She's like, she's standing there like wooden and it went nowhere. And now she, grand,、uh, she brought the ballad. Yeah, it's really nice, it's powerful, but sometimes she's shouting and I don't like it. I was really feeling Corazon's song, Falling Glass. Like, Corazon is in this contest every year. She's back, she's got a ballad, but this ballad is very 2016. It just, it's not cheesy. It's not, you know, even the idea of falling glass, pain, shattering.、Um, she can sing it too, it's a beautiful melody. I think she'll do better than she has in the past with this song. I... Uh, honestly, I don't remember the song, so I can't say anything. Right, so who else are you guys feeling? I, I think she's a newcomer. I'm really liking Brooke,、mm. and her song is Golden. And once again, it's an upbeat dance number. And last year they had the Warrior, this year they have the Rebel, because it opens up and she's basically saying like that we're rebels and kind of implying that we're on the run. And I can really imagine this could, has the potential to be something great. And it's Frivolous, sunny Mediterranean pop, and that's what I like. She has a great voice, and、uh, the energy in the song builds up very nice and then explodes at the chorus. Really great. But also, I love、uh, Maxine Pace, Young Love. It's really enjoyable. I, I like her voice. It reminds me of、uh, Amy Winehouse.、Uh, it has a unique vibe in it. But the problem with the song is that it also reminds of、uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Like, the startup is Nearly the same, like do 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 do. And but she transforms it. She transforms it differently, and it has has something in it. Even so,、uh, the melody similar, but the energy is different. Um, yeah, it's very Megan Trainer. And all about that face, I kind of have that feeling. Even look wise, she's wearing primary colors, she kind of has the puffy out sort of pinafore dress. And yeah, it's really kind of a boppy song. If it went to your origin, I think it would be one of those songs that would people would take out the missile and start blasting the plagiarism, going at her saying, Oh, that's all about that face. Blah, 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 blah. But I think it's a great song for a national final. It's one of those maybe mid table songs that'll get everybody. Cheerful and singing along, but I don't think it will win, but I like it. Bellissimo! Italy's RAI has revealed the 20 acts that will compete in San Remo 2016, and there are a lot of big names known to people in Italy and people outside. You guys, can we please kick this off with Anna Lisa? I just watched some of her music videos. Splenda? Splende? She is splendid. She is sexy. Her voice is deep and just, I don't know, I just want to jump into her voice and swim around.、Um, she knows how to work her angles, high fashion, strobe lights. She's the total package. Yeah, I think so. I like、uh, Annalisa, her voice and her music. I'm a little bit surprised that she's in that list because she was in Sarema like. This year, 2015, and in 2013, so I don't know why she would be in Sanremo as well in 2016. But I'm looking forward to her song because I know that many Euro fans love Annalisa and they want to see her at the Eurovision Song Contest, so I'm curious about it. I'm not overly familiar with her outside of the Sanremo kind of circus. But she strikes me as something a bit similar to Emma Maroney, but a bit less harsh. She's not as guttural and not as rocky, but she's quite similar maybe to Emma's more recent songs. 
But I, I like her and I'm looking forward to seeing what she could bring. I'm gonna throw out some numbers. Four albums, 16 singles, three platinum discs, three gold discs. Annalisa slays the pack. Now another artist we have to talk about is Arisa, and as you know, she won the newcomer section of San Remo. When was that? 2009, a few years ago, um, and went on to judge X Factor. I love Anna Arisa, and uh, I think she she's got a beautiful voice, and she's like a veteran. She's like a veteran for San Remo. She's basically in San Remo like every year she's there. So, and in 2015, she was the co-host for um, Carlo Conti. In 2016, she will be there. And I'm curious about her song because she dreamed to be at the Eurovision Song Contest. She said, I want to be on stage. I want to share my music with Europe. So we have to listen to her song to, to see if um, it would be good for uh, the Eurovision. I think she's kind of the whole package because she's got a really distinctive image as well. She's got kind of the pixie cut and the, well, I've looked on YouTube, it varies throughout time. Sometimes it's bleach blonde, sometimes it's other colours. But I think she's the whole package and she's definitely something that she would continue Italy's great run, I think, at Eurovision. Like, she's kind of my fantasy. She's like a spaghetti carbonara that doesn't make you fat. Cause like, she's delicious, all the ingredients are there, and she's tasty. I'm eating it up. Valeria Scanu? The only thing I know about him is that he won San Remo back in 2010, and that he recently imitated Conchita Verst on your set face sounds familiar. Christian, you wrote about it. How big of a deal is he? Well, Valeria Scanu is um, a particular name, because many, many, many Italians hate Valeria Scanu because they don't like um, his attitude, they don't like his songs. But um, she won uh, Your Face Sounds Familiar uh, and she was in uh, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here as well. So it's <laughs> like singer or um, TV personality, I, I don't know. Um, Carlo Conti hosted Your Face Sounds Familiar. So we have like this, okay, you will be, you were there and now you will be in my Sanremo as well. We'll see, but also uh, he has his face on, um, do you know Panettone, this Italian? Oh yes, delicious. And he has um, a brand with his face on a Panettone. So, Valerio Scano is <laughs> funny, I have to say. <laughs> and another familiar name, of course, is Dear Jack, who competed last year at Sanremo, and they were pretty popular among Euro fans. There will be a little fight because uh, uh, Dear Jack lost their uh, lead singer. Their lead singer was Alessio Bernabé, and Alessio Bernabé will be in Sanremo as well as a solo artist. So they revealed this little fight. Now Dear Jack has another leader called Lainer Riclessi. He was uh, in the Italian X Factor. Now sing with, um, he sings with Dear Jack. So it will be nice to see this fight, music fight on stage. I I think it's interesting, there's kind of this global trend for boy bands, but that they're more kind of authentic and sophisticated because they've learned how to play instruments. And so they're essentially rock bands with the boy band looks. You've got the 1975 in London, then you've got Soft Engine, um, from who represented Finland back in 2014. So this is kind of continuing the trend. And I think they're going to be very popular, especially with teenage girls. I don't know if they stay up that late to watch San Remo, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to see what they bring, and I imagine then the papers and tabloids would surely up the ante between the ex-frontman and the band. Now Christian, you are on the ground in Italy. Who do you think, based on reputation alone, could do really well? I think that Noemi could win it all because um, she's been several times in San Remo and with, with uh, positions in the final ranking. And um, Carlo Conti said uh, she was sing a very, how can I say, a serious song about uh, a woman. And um, so the critics will be happy for sure. Another famous Italian singer wrote a song for her, Marco Mazzini, who was in San Remo 2015. So I think that Noemi could win it all. But also Annalisa, why not? Annalisa. Okay, and my favorite among the list is uh, for sure Dolce Nera. 
we can translate uh, her name as uh, Sweet Black. I really love her. I have all her um, albums, singles, and I'm a big supporter, and I'm so excited she will be there. I think I screamed like a fangirl when uh, Carlo Conti said, Don't you need a with all of my view? So I hope I can fangirl in uh, Stockholm as well. There was two things. I saw there was your man Enrico Ruggeri. He represented Italy in 1993. I obviously was too young to remember what he did back then but I listened to him his newer songs and he sounds like he spent the intervening years just gargling rocks and smoking um, it's very uh, I don't think it would translate well to a European audience it's kind of old-fashioned nearly if you listen to it it's automatically Italian but I think that could be a bit of a disaster and then there was one name I'd never heard of him but when I was looking at the list it stood out to me because he was the only one to have a song title in English, Wake Me Up, by Rocco Hunt, and he's a rapper. And San Remo kind of has this reputation of being this really classy, sophisticated event. They're in black tie. And I just can't wait to see if he brings chaos. I, I doubt the juries would would um, tolerate him. Well, uh, Rocco Hunt um, is uh, the winner of the newcomer section in uh, 2014, so she he already won Sanremo with a rap song because he's from Napoli, Napoli, and uh, in Napoli there are many, many, many televoters who <laughs> support their favorites. So probably, and we have another rapper, Clementino. So two raps this year in Sanremo, and um, yeah, I'm curious because wake up. It's not so um, usual that a song in Saremo has a, an English title. So I'm surprised. 19X sang in Switzerland's expert checked for Die Grosse Anschädigung Show 2016, the Swiss national selection for Eurovision. But only six have made the final, or rather seven, because Stephanie Palazzo was disqualified and subsequently replaced with Casillo. Now you guys, we're running a poll on Weeby Blogs to name your favorite. Currently, Casillo is dead last with zero votes. We apologize for that. In fifth place is Theo with Because of You. Fourth place, Stanley Miller, Feel the Love. Third place, Bella C, Another World. Second place, Vincent Gross, Half a Smile. And our current leader, by a huge margin, more than 50% of the vote, is Rika, the last of our kind. You guys, let's take these in reverse order, starting with sixth place, Casillo. The song Disc Door, Gold Disc. Is it a gold hit? Well, this certainly won't be forgotten because Switzerland's national final is kind of unique in a way that so many w weird and wacky songs enter and yet every year they manage to pull out six of the blandest and safest entries and give them to the people to vote. So Casio, I don't rank the song at all in any way. I just dislike it completely, but it is completely memorable because they're jumping around on stage, they're shouting, they're banging guitars, they have accordions. They basically brought the whole kitchen sink with them. And that approach, I don't know if it will win the votes, but it certainly livens up the show. Well, actually I liked how it started. It's funny, energetic, such a French Swiss chanson. Uh, but then, then he started to talk, some speech in French. I couldn't understand that, it doesn't make sense for me. And then suddenly he pulled off his bell and started to push the drums. Like, what the hell went on? And then everybody died on stage. Yeah, this is a hot mess. This reminds me of Moldova, Zadobzi, Zadub. You remember they had the cone heads and the unicycles? It's like, as you say, the whole kitchen sink. I don't like spoken word. I feel like he's not singing, he's just talking. Um, he's doing a strip tease, but no offense, he doesn't have the form to do a strip tease. Um, there's an accordion, I'm liking the Romanian squeeze box, re box realness, um, but no, I can't get behind this. I mean, it's great that it's not sterile. Switzerland's national selection, as Porg says, is often quite clinical, um, but this is just too much. In fifth place is Theo, because of you. It's very sleepy. Um, it's relaxing. It's not, it doesn't offend, but it's not going to grab your attention, and I can't see it going anywhere. The, the vocals are fine, they're not outstanding, they're not going to pick up points. The melody is kind of non-existent in a way, it just continues on. Yeah, uh, if he was a busker on the street, I'd pass him by without looking. It's just boring, it goes nowhere, and I really can't stand his voice because it's just annoying and quicky. And the song itself 
just nothing. I can't care less about it. Um, basically, we've heard it so many times, the guitar and that bowing about love because of you. Yeah, it's not memorable. The only thing I remember is that he has some kind of alternative vibe, and I remember that the harmonies were really off. I don't mind his voice. I think it's deep and resonant, and like if you heard it, you'd know it was him, but that's not enough. In fourth, Stanley Miller, Feel the Love. I'm feeling charitable, because it reminds me of a charity signal. Um, it's all peace and love, feel the love. Everybody's doing these hard things. These hard things, when Ryan Dolan did them in 2013, they were mildly fresh. Now, three years later, we're sick to death of them. Um, the song itself, it, it's, I've said this about so many songs, but this is cheesy and ridiculously so. Even his smile is so white, it's dairy, like, and. Don't blame him for being American. <laughs> ah. Yeah, the, the song sounds dated and it probably would have sounded dated 20 years ago. Um, it doesn't really have any redeeming qualities as far as I can see. I don't like how it sounds. It's also it's full of cliches, like diamonds from the sky, paradise, shining bright, fields of love. It's so funny you bring that up because I wrote cliche and wrote down those phrases and also dancing in the moonlight. Oh, it's so Leanne Rhines, 1990. It reminds me of Broadway, like from 20 years ago, like Rent, the musical. Um, I like the choral element, but I don't think choral element is for Eurovision, like inner choir boy of the year or something. It just, again, cliche, 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 you called it. Third place, Bella C, Another World. She'd clean up at the VMAs in the cruise ship category. Like, she'd win that hands down. It's very cabaret piano bars. You nearly expect someone to come up with your dinner while she's singing along. Yes, it's not really the kind of thing that I can envisage on a big stage in a packed arena. Actually, I really like it. It's kind of bondish style, but it takes me somewhere away outside of this planet. Uh, it makes me think of all the problems around the world. But the only problem I have with this song is her facial expressions. It's, it looks so weird, her, when she sings, and now the world, and she's like smiling, and uh, her eyes go, just fall out. Yeah, you know how women, when they give birth, they're screaming and shrieking? It's like this one to be like, ah, ah, she'd be pushing it out with a smile. There's something very <laughs> creepy about the whole thing. I had the exact same feeling. Um, her voice is fine. I think she's very sultry and very breathy. It's very phone sex operator. Maybe y'all are too young for that, but like back in the day, that's how people got their kicks. It's just very, <sighs> I think she should come back with a more modern song with an EDM beat. That's my solution for everything. Now, in second place is someone we actually interviewed here on Wooey Blogs. It's Vincent Gross with Half a Smile. And I am gonna kick this off by saying he is super sweet. This song is super sweet. It is perhaps a bit too sleepy to win or do well at Eurovision, but there's like an authentic quality to this. It's unfinished, and I think that's what makes it likable. Um, it's still mainstream, though. I, I guess you could call it an indie love ballad in a way. Uh, I quite like it, and depending on my mood, this is my number two or my number one. Usually it's my number two. Um, but I think he's a credible contestant, and I think he can sing well live. He's really young. I think he's just 18, 17 or 18. I wouldn't mind seeing him go to Stockholm. I think with the right staging, he could do quite well and maybe reach the final because I'm kind of getting Paradise Oscar vibes, Ooh. Finland 2011. He's the same blonde boy next door look and he's kind of singing a song that's kind of family friendly. So he could sweep up both that way and he's very charming. And compared to the other guitar ballad that Teal sings, there's no comparison. It's a really enjoyable song, I like it, and especially I like his attitude on stage. I like his gesture, like how he just points his finger at you and then makes a smile. It's really nice. Yeah, it's really tender. It's just, he's not a diva. Like some of these people, I'm not going to name Bellacy, they feel like they've already arrived. Whereas he knows he's like climbing to something. It's like he doesn't expect to win. I get the sense he wants to win, but he doesn't expect to win, um, which is refreshing. Now you guys, first place by a huge margin. It's Miss Rika, the last of our kind. Poor and kick us off. Well, I'm not surprised. Um, really, there's no comparison. This is, has so much class compared to the other entries. It's way more polished. I'm not completely in love with it. I think I might be kind of over-egging it a bit just because it's compared to the rest of the songs in the selection. But it has a certain kind of Margaret Berber 
burger, not burger, burger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it has those kind of vibes of Fiji My Love, kind of electronic, but it's kind of cold and icy. I think this is what's going to win, but this is a Swiss selection, so I don't know what the, like last week everybody, or not last week, last year everybody presumed Time Bell would run away with it and ended up giving it to Manny Renee and then she came last in her semi. So, I don't know. But then, even the look, she's very Sia, she's got the blonde bob and hair, so I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. I understand why it's so a favorite to win, but I'm not convinced. It's Yes, of course, it's uh, powerful, with nice melody, but for me it sounds kind of repetitive. And her chorus, like, with the last of our kind, just repeats all over again with the same melody, and at the end of the song I'm totally bored. Yeah, I think this song has great potential, but they really need to rework it before Stockholm if this wins. It starts off gray, dark, and edgy, but then it builds into something inspiring and hopeful. It's like, kind of like Sia, her music is upbeat, but there's like a darkness to it. This is, basically, they're continuing the Loic Matet trend from last year. Um, but I, yeah, she needs to cut and paste or something, give it more of a shape, because it's just flatlining for me. But I think the vocals are there, I think the look is there. I mean, she took a black trash bag and fashioned it into a dress and it worked. This is amazing, she's a creative woman. Um, I'm feeling really positive about this. I, I think right now I give the edge to Rika um, for the victory. And also, I, you know, I like a powerful female. Like The signs are good, she's a Canadian as well. Building bridges <laughs> across that ocean. And the last Canadian was Celine Dion. <laughs> 